Hi, and welcome to the May 2021 Sky Report. I'm Patrick So. Here's what's happening in the skies of Southern California. In the morning sky on May 3rd, look for the two largest planets in the solar system, Jupiter and Saturn, above the southeast horizon at 5 a.m. The 22-day-old waning gibbous moon is located about 6 degrees below Saturn. The next morning, the moon moves close to Jupiter in its eastward motion across the sky. On the 5th, the moon is a waning crescent below Jupiter and Saturn. The morning sky is dominated by the summer constellations of Scorpius and Sagittarius low in the south. The brightest portions of the Milky Way lie between Sagittarius the Archer and the tail of Scorpius the Scorpion. From the city, the Milky Way is hardly visible because of light pollution. From dark skies far from city lights, the Milky Way is clearly visible arching overhead to the south. This time exposure of the Milky Way was taken last month by our telescope demonstrator, Anthony Perkett from Joshua Tree National Park. We turn to the evening sky. On the 12th, the one and a half day old crescent moon is located one and a half degrees from the brilliant planet Venus shortly after sunset. On the next day, the moon is just above and to the east of the elusive planet Mercury. This would be a good opportunity to look for Mercury. Two days later, the crescent moon continues its eastward journey across the sky and meets up with Mars. Both Mars and the moon are located in the constellation of Gemini the Twins. The heads of the twins are marked by the stars Castor and Pollux. In the evening, the constellation Virgo the Maiden is high above the southern horizon. Its brightest star is Spica. Below Virgo is Corvus the Crow. Its four stars are shaped like a trapezium. Leo the Lion is high above the south-southwest horizon, while Scorpius the Scorpion is rising in the southeast. On our moon calendar, last quarter is the third, new is on the 11th, first quarter is the 19th, and full moon is on the 26th. The full moon coincides with a special astronomical event this month, a total lunar eclipse. On May 26, a total lunar eclipse is visible over the western portion of the United States. This is the first lunar eclipse in 2021. The second eclipse occurs in November. 2019 was the last time a total lunar eclipse was visible from Los Angeles. What is a total lunar eclipse, and what will we expect to see? A total lunar eclipse happens when the moon moves into the Earth's shadow. Depending on the moon's position within the shadow, the eclipse can last from a few minutes to a couple of hours. The lunar eclipse is visible anywhere from the night side of the Earth facing the moon. The eclipse is visible from Australia, Southeast Asia, parts of Western United States, and Western South America. The lines on the map show when the moon is on the horizon during various stages of the eclipse. From Los Angeles, the moon will set just as the darkest part of the Earth's shadow, called the umbra, leaves the face of the moon. Because the sun is not a point source of light, the shadow cast by the Earth into space has two parts. The lighter shadow is the penumbra, and the innermost dark shadow is called the umbra. We can represent the Earth's shadow projected into the sky to show what happens when the moon moves through the shadow as seen from Los Angeles. The Earth's shadow projected into the sky is the dark circular region in this diagram. Let's see what happens when the moon moves into the shadow as seen from Los Angeles. At 1.48 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, the bright full moon begins to move into the penumbra. You won't notice much at this time. At 2.45 a.m., the moon touches the umbra. At this time, the moon's lower limb is much darker than its upper right. 4.11 a.m., the moon is completely within the umbra. It appears bright orange-red, taking on the colors of all the world's sunrises and sunsets. During this time, the sky darkens without the light of the full moon. Maximum or greatest eclipse is at 4.18. Totality ends at 4.26 a.m., when the moon emerges from the northeast region of the Earth's umbra. Totality is only 14 minutes because the moon moves through the northern part of the umbra and not through the middle of the umbra. The moon leaves the umbra at 5.52 a.m. and sets a minute later in daylight. The sun rises eight minutes before moonset. The eclipse is over from Los Angeles. Even though the moon has set from Los Angeles, the moon continues to exit from the penumbra until it's out at 6.50 a.m. 
This phase of the eclipse is visible from the Pacific Ocean. Here is a detailed look at the entire eclipse sequence. In this simulation, we can watch the moon move through the Earth's shadow starting from 1.30 a.m. until 5.45 a.m. Griffith Observatory will stream the eclipse live, weather permitting, on our YouTube channel. Please tune in for this amazing event. And that's all for this month. Until next time, cheerio!